Hey guys, this is uh, Harpal and um, I am still recovering from COVID, but I wanted to send this message out to all of you. Um, you really need, everybody needs to get on their uh, UC essays now. Okay? I've given everybody enough time to work on the experiences. Uh, honeymoon phase is over. Uh, next time when I meet you all, I want to see drafts of your UC essays. You have enough content already built out. Over the next few days, while I'm recovering, I need you to start putting in your UC essays and I'll start reviewing them. Uh, parents, I need you to be on top of your game with your students. This is a critical milestone along the way. They've documented their experiences. Now they have to just put the content in the UC format, which is a lot easier than many other formats. That's why I want the parents involved so they can also have start helping out the students, okay? So without further ado, let's start showing you some of the data on the screen. Um, <clears throat> okay, all right. So this is the document you all have access to and I'll send a link again to all this thing. We'll go, what are the PIQs, the personal inside questions? How they are different from common app essays? Uh, we'll show you some samples uh, of what are the responses with critiques on those. Um, we'll talk about what are, what is an interview style response to a PIQ because PIQs are expecting you to answer like an interview format. And most uh, parents have gone through interview techniques, you know, at some point or the other in their lives. So it's a good way to explain to your children what a star format is, situation, task, action, results, learnings, okay? Um, we'll talk about what works in a PIQ, what does not, what do you avoid talking about, best practices, how do you generate more ideas, making incremental progress, okay? Now, rest of this document from 16, page 16 onwards to 64 are purely samples, okay? We won't cover much of that. So right now, but you can read it all. It's very good, very good essays by, written by some of my past students. Now, the PIQs are the written component of your essay, but that's really just one part of who you are. You're expected to write in an informal uh, way, explaining as if you were going to an interview, okay? Which means the format changes. It becomes more, um, more how you would con communicate. And... Um, that's why the, the the essays or the experiences you've been doing have been in some of that style. So you can think in that style, okay? <clears throat> there are eight questions. You expect to respond to four of them. You have about eight to 10 experiences already documented. Your goal is to take those eight to 10 experiences, take the best out of them, map them to the, the UC prompts. It's not rocket science to connect them and see which ones connects where, and then actually starting writing an essay, which is more like four, 500, 600 words, maybe even 700 words. I can cut it down, but make it formal where it, the form that it's an actual essay, like an interview style, giving a response. Okay, and we'll talk what that means. Take a look at this video. Um, why is this very important? See, for UCs, they don't have any interviews and they don't have any teacher recommendations. So your PIQs are really the only way that everybody and everybody comes to know what you're about, okay? So it's very critical that you make it very careful. It's not, they are not a vocabulary quiz, no fancy words required, no creative writing requirements. Um, just, you know, you don't have to go through every part of your life either. It's not a chronological order. It's just four or five experiences that told, tell them some of your values, okay? So do not make it more complicated than it should be. Um, like I said, there's no interview acceptance letter, so this becomes very critical. Uh, <clears throat> say this one, um, the test scores and grades show us important traits related to how well a student works, but we also want to see how a student thinks and every student thinks differently, okay? So that's kind of how they think about. Look at this um, workshop. There's a link in the, no, this is actually six, sample essay questions, prompt questions with critiques on what was missed, like was there a missed opportunity or what is a value add? Look at this on your own. Uh, it'll actually get you thinking about how a good essay prompt is responded to, okay? Most important thing is you think of the PIQs as interview questions and you respond to them as such. Now, I've told every one of you how to apply the STAR storytelling and interviewing format, the situation, task, action, and results. That's the format you will use to set the stage <coughs> for most examples, particularly examples. You obviously set a stage with your answer, what you want to say, what the theme is going to be, but when you set the example, say this, and you are expected to give examples. Don't just leave it like, you know, theory and theoretical bullshit. Just get down to the point very quickly, okay? 
Now, in your experiences, you have been giving me essays, examples, okay? And uh, you have experiences and ambitions that you've given me so far. When you find your target prompts, you have to create a content strategy that links one or two of your experiences to each of the target four prompts, okay? So take one or two experiences, one being the primary, the second one could be a secondary, which you want to pull off of it. For the sake of this conversation, for while you're doing this on your own, just take one example and I can bring in the second example for you, okay? Uh, make sure your ambitions show in at least one of the prompts, like yeah, you want to go into a CS career, why a career at UC would be very important to you, okay? Make sure that comes. And ambitions, many of you are very weak on your ambitions essay, so make sure that part is coming out well about where do you want to go? What subject do you want to do and what do you plan to do with that knowledge? And the point is connected to the prompt somewhere. Okay? or to the example saying, this is what got me thinking about a career in political science or yada, yada, yada. Okay? And, for, and if you have any questions, you look at the uh, sample prompts that I've given and it actually has some of those things where uh, careers are called out. Okay? Now, so in this one, you can see these are your seven prompts, eight prompts. Okay? One is about leadership. Uh, tell us our leadership experience, uh, how it positively influenced others. Second is our creative side. And so first one is leadership. Leadership can be anything. You could be a leader. You don't have to be a president of a club to show leadership. You could have been a leader because you did fundraisers. The task was so important. You had to do it. Leader could be somebody who mentors others, somebody who's empathetic to a group, is able to help a group move forward, was able to come up with a unique idea. So you do not need to be a leader per se. Okay. So take that out of your minds. You could, if as long as the story comes together, we are fine. Um, every person has a creative side. It can be expressed in many ways, problem solving, original, innovative, artistic. Show your express your creative side. Again, <clears throat> creative sides can be quirk, okay? Quirks of what you do, what you like doing, why, why you do so. Less important is what you do. More important is why you do it and what's your point of doing it the way you do it. Like, you know, um, uh, there are several essays you'll see there later that you can talk about. But first is leadership, second is creativity, third is your greatest talent or skill. This is typically expected to be something on the lines of what you have, you know, built like an extracurricular activity or debate or any of that stuff. So really around the societies you join, clubs you join, uh, that's kind of what you're expected to show as I had the skill, I did this in a particular subject, I like this thing, and then I did it with APCS or yada, yada, yada. And that's how I built it, did an internship, stuff like that, okay? Fourth one is describe how you've taken advantage of a significant educational opportunity or work to overcome an educational barrier that you have faced. This is critical to show, I did not have access to, so if, assuming you're in a school where certain resources do not exist, okay? And you had to go outside, like do a dual enrollment to learn some of that stuff, or you had to do an AP class outside to learn some of those concepts. That's an educational barrier to overcome. Uh, maybe you have uh, done an internship outside, picking on something which you learned in the school, okay? So basically you can get advantage. It can also be to have overcome educational barriers. So maybe you are suffering depression or you are going through ADHD or you're going through some other learning disorder. How did you overcome that? Maybe there is a separation in the, in, the, in the family, in the house. Maybe there is something else which you want to talk about. That's the one you can use to connect, okay? Prompt number five, uh, describe the most significant challenge you have faced and the steps you have taken to overcome this challenge. How has this challenge affected your academic achievement? Now this one, you're expected to talk about some physical challenge, some mental disorder, like almost, uh, you know, like actually this is not the same. Educational barrier was different, but there is an overlap between four and five. But at the same time, oh, five is really going into a significant challenge you overcome. Like, you know, ADHD could be one, like as a learning disorder, lots of those could come over here. Um, overcome educational barrier could have been um, the fact that you've gone to a, you've not gotten, uh, you know, the subject was not being taught or you didn't have the money or the resources to do it, how you learned it on your own, you self-studied, you mentored, you tutored, how you found your way around. Maybe there was a financial crunch in the house, how you overcame that, that's important, okay? I need to sneeze now. <laughs> oh. All right, okay. Clearly my COVID is still not gone. Okay, think of an academic subject, the problem number six, academic subject that inspires you. Describe how you have furthered interest inside or outside your class. Now this one, academic interest that, that aspires you is actually very similar to taking advantage of an educational opportunity, okay? So if you're gonna use uh, some internship and stuff to show educational opportunity, 
this might be the one which really shows this one. This one of showing an educational opportunity, taking advantage of an educational opportunity could be um, competitions you've gone into or you've picked up stuff, you know, working with your teacher research and stuff. Um, this one could be more around philanthropy or you've taken an academic subject and you've decided to go into internship, but there's always a hit on this, okay? But again, look at the prompts below. It'll talk about why, what you can think about them differently. What have we done to make your school or community a better place? This one is about interact, debate, any of those things where you have been a part of the team, what have you made up, you know, bullying, any of those things. And again, I've got a lot of examples below, but this is the one for community making it a better place. Now, if none of these seven got what you wanted for, then you can talk, maybe it's the identity. Maybe you have a unique identity, maybe a, bi a, a biracial heritage or something which makes you stand out as a strong candidate. That's the one you want to use over here. This is not more of a sob story. This is about how do you, because these seven prompts could not answer that question. And that's very important to understand. Only then I was, I, I used this one. And a lot of people do use it, but you got to be careful when you're using this, okay? Okay, these are the 14 factors that the UC system weighs in order to make their decision. Um, what I found interesting was if your prompts, if your uh, PIQs can answer outstanding performance in one academic subject and actually drill home, that's great to show that. Achievements in special projects, again, based on the internships and stuff, we can show that here. Improvement in academic performance, you don't need to do that in PIQs because that they will see anyways through your um, scores. Special talent achievement and awards, this will typically show in your activities list. So you don't need to talk about it here. By the way, if you put something in the activities list and you've already mentioned that what you did over there, the PIQ should not be about the same thing that I got the prize, I became this. It should be more about what happened, what the heck happened over there, okay? Uh, preparation in education, participation in educational preparation programs, uh, academic accomplishment in life of life experiences. Again, these last four, all of these eight to 14 with the exception of uh, 10, pretty much are or 10 and 11. So eight, nine, 12, 13, 14 are typically the factors that the essays are going to the PIQs will talk to. So that tells you that they have a very high weightage in the, the UC application. Now, PIQ are different from Common App. Um, Common App is a lot more flowery, a lot more fa fa in a fancy terminology, but it's um, it's a lot longer. This one, a 350, they're expecting to give you four dimensions of your personality. Common App, you can go through those three, four dimensions or two, three dimensions in one application. Typically, many times people will take a UC app and they'll make it into the Common App. I typically like to take one or two of the UC apps or the UC prompts, or maybe two, three of them, and we make them into the common app prompt okay we'll talk about that later when we get to the 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 common the common app prompts now how can students share their stories what worked what did not work in a piq um you know um these are some of the tips okay examples and details are super helpful examples they need to be recent um <clears throat> If first, if you you know again have it very recent, um, make them very succinct, and you know again you can go into the details. But what's important is keep it recent. You know if you're showing anything about middle school, then talk about how that inspired you for high school. Okay, don't stop at just middle school. What does not work is flowery language. Do not make assumptions on what they are reading. You know just, just don't irritate the heck out of those guys because they're dealing with thousands and thousands of applications. I mean, you see San Diego got, got this year 175,000 applications. USCLA had something north of that. So you can understand if they see flowery poems and stuff, they get very mad at the whole thing. Okay, so please do not do any of that stuff. Um, they should be in your voice, showing your passion, uh, answering the entire prompt. Very often I see students answering the first part of the prompt, second one they forget. Uh, be specific and do not repeat. Um, again, um, essays, you know, they have to be in your language. Okay? So sometimes even if I edit your essays for you and I make the changes, I ask you very often to start afresh, like keep it, keep that one uh, essay version somewhere on the side and then start over again, because you need that ability to look at it over again and just write it in your own words. You've got the thought process from looking at my essay or the one that I help you with. And do that often when, when you start doing draft V2 or V3, start from a clean slate. Just look at that application, what you wrote like two, three times and start afresh, okay? No passive stuff, uh, you know, um, 
sometimes people are talking about others, like about their mom and others. And I'm like, dude, don't do that. Uh, no, don't be offensive. Don't be cliches. You know, be very sample focused. Uh, what do you want to not talk again? Uh, you don't want to talk about a specific campus. Uh, you know, you are talking about UCs in general, inappropriate use of humor. Humor is not really expected in these. Things. So poems and stuff, you keep it away. Quotations, again, um, you know, you, they want to know your thoughts. Maybe a one quote of somebody which inspires you is fine, but uh, try to stay away from those things in general, okay? Uh, generalities, uh, stick to facts and personal examples. Rep repetition, okay, if it's in the activities or in one of the PIQs, it should not come here. If it does come, it has to come with a very different way, put a very clear lens on it to really put there, okay? Asking philosophical questions, do not do that bullshit of asking a rhetoric question and stuff, okay? Best practices, uh, honesty, uh, risk taker, self-revelation, show your teen voice, very, very important, okay? <clears throat> Uh, it's not one idea, four different ideas. So show your personality in different ways. Um, nobody can tell your story better than you. So just keep it all in first person. Uh, take one or two always concrete examples to communicate your point. So your PIQ should always have one or two examples somewhere. One maybe to make your main point and then second one to make a secondary point, okay? Uh, ways to generate more ideas. Uh, special projects, uh, you know, again, look at this thing, but, uh, you know, you've already put some of your ideas in your... Um, uh, details for me in my in the um, uh, in the in the experiences but this is an opportunity for you to start over again like you know maybe we missed out some things maybe you didn't answer some of the questions so think about those things maybe this can become secondary parts to your essay key is the more you think right now of original ideas the less we'll be in trouble down the line okay uh, make incremental progress start doing this stuff every day very important you guys are really behind for me okay we are in the middle of july and you're July, your Berkeley, your UCS has not even started. So this needs to get started now, okay? Um, you can always edit a bad page. You cannot edit a blank page, right? This is a very interesting quote. Like hardest part is just to get started, to just map those for the, your experiences to the PIQs and just put it together, draft in a basic format, okay? Um, this is a good way to get started. It's a neat starting point. Um, and, or you could just copy these, you know, these prompts, these eight prompts from here put them in a document and then just start working from there with me and then share that with me, okay? So, but you know, really, you know, leadership, what I liked was this is in the UC's essay, in the UC um, um, uh, uh, Adcom's words. Um, they don't want to set definitions. They're saying, they see, like I said, they don't ask you about leadership roles. They're saying, if a student has an experience that when they stepped up and led, that's good enough, okay? Um, we want to know what you learn from the experience. That's very critical. These are their words, okay, not my words. If we want to know if the experience is the catalyst for any future activities or accomplishments, that is another very critical point. They want to know if this triggered something bigger. We want to know, we want a brief overview. So the overview of what happened is actually very little important. What's important is how you apply this down the line, okay? So the focal point of the response was the experience that was gained, not a step-by-step -step overview of the experience in itself, okay? So a leadership role can mean more than just a title. It can mean being a mentor, I think acting as a person in charge of a specific task or taking the lead role in organizing an event or project. Think about what you accomplished and what you learned in the process, what are your responsibilities. We have given you, um, I have given you four examples over here. Okay. Uh, there was one was of this dude whose robot broke during the competition. He was a hotshot robotics dude and how he was able to turn that around and uh, you know get that um, the process going um, he got the team really together uh, robotics uh, club president was about the vision mentoring that he was able to show it that impacted our math on his stem classes so how he was able to mentor some of the freshmen he talked about that this uh, mock trial president uh, was you know uh, help others peers with building their confidence she talked about a lot about that and how she was able to take all that knowledge to her writing club um, this person has something were called the Mars Society, which was some astronomy stuff and they were doing and how he was leading chaotic projects, how he mentored freshmen. And then finally, there was this girl who was a fashion club lead, how she was able to, uh, she created the fashion club, how she organized fundraisers and then did the delegation of the team, okay? So hopefully that explains to you what that is of the first PIQ. Now let's go into PIQ number two, okay? Uh, PIQ number two is, uh, person's creative side. <coughs> so 
they are asking for a creator side. What does the student define as creativity outlook? Creative can be explained, but does not have to be shown. Okay, can be explained, but does not have to be shown. If a student is talking about their creative outlet being very brilliant, we're not expecting to see a web website. Okay, we don't want a writing sample if a student is sharing. So know what your creativity is. Some writing, some some samples are given over here. What you could talk about creativity. One of my students wrote about baking last year. He got into UC Davis and Santa Barbara. Um, there are people who written about computer programming, how it inspires them to do a certain style of programming, what they do, what they gain out of it, their power or their personality. There's a lot of things you could get over here. Okay. The what I liked over here was uh, what does creativity mean to you? Do you have a creative skill that's important? Um, what are the steps you took to solve a problem? So very well, you could be, your creativity could be just solving a problem, okay? A problem could be about the band, band not being able to make it on time and you were able to make some changes to make things happen. Creativity could be a robotics project going down like that dude has talked about. You can be a lot of things, okay? Uh, how does your creativity influence your decisions inside or outside classroom? Does your creativity related to your major? See this part? created to a major or this is very important. This is many times in the PIQs, they, they do not talk much about where you can talk about the future the career points. So make sure you're talking about that. Uh, talk about a time when your viewpoint was unique compared to the others. What are the problems that you solved? Um, same situation from another perspective, another person who was there with you, how was your approach different? So like, you know, maybe the leader screwed up, his approach was different, What you came in, talk about the problem and how you solved it. They're interested in the story side of it or how you solved it. That is again, very succinct part of it. It's the learning, what you applied down the line. Maybe you screwed up, okay? Through the screw up itself, you can learn a lot of good things. Um, so we'll go back to explaining this part. Uh, so let's talk about some people, how they did this. So like, for example, this dude talked about a ceramics class, you know, the fact that his ceramics always were coming out quirky, they were always messed up and ties it to dancing. How he was able to use dancing techniques and make that work for him, okay? So that's pretty cool. I like that concept. Um, this, uh, one of my students wrote about the love for the cello. He was a cello player. He always wanted to do it. He was initially forced into playing the violin because there was no other place for cello, but he kept learning it on the side. He went on the websites. He learned, self-learned himself, did a lot of bullshit, a lot of good stuff, right? And over time, he got into the ensemble and there also he had to have fight with one of the other students. Like there was a duel, um, a, a match off between the two. So he wrote about those details, what happened, okay? So, you know, that's pretty cool stuff. Um, I expressed myself as a programmer. He created an app for cross-school collaboration, parents and students. So, you know, she's talking about creativity in terms of solving a real problem. Then uh, this last one is love for music, not a born gifted, but research and found a unique path to doing music and many things along with that. So it's pretty cool another way of doing that, right? So then now let's talk about the third one. Uh, what would you say is your greatest skill or talent? How have you developed and uh, demonstrated that skill over time? Okay. Um, one of my students talked about chess and robotics, how he built, why he always felt the innate desire, how he was connected with chess. And, you know, that was a very important thing. The tough mental conditioning it did over time for him, he talked about that. Uh, this girl, the art girl, talks about how she had this art, but how she got taken for a ride and how, uh, you know, she was a very good painter and, and uh, sculptress and drawing person and how she got taken advantage of. But at the same time, she learned a lot of important things and, you know, she how she overcame her uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, same thing with, you know, um, this person was a very good storyteller and was really into creative and would get really involved in the creativity of uh, like doing plays and theaters and improvising there and found her mojo in mock trial where she killed her opponent. So that's her personality. That's her greatest skill. And she's obviously headed to law school. Uh, this one actually made it to Berkeley. Uh, swimming progression, calming the mind. So like, you know, talking about how swimming was important to this person, how she learned the strokes and what, you know, what her, the, her life was about and how teamwork helped along the way, what she learned over time and demonstrated. Um, last one is again, journey of growth via music. So I'm just going to quickly go over the remaining. I'm not going to go into actual details of the, what the UC said, uh, but fifth one, fourth one is describe how you've taken advantage of a significant opportunity or work to overcome an educational barrier that you have faced. Now, <clears throat> You're looking for an educational opportunity or overcome a barrier. So how did you take advantage of an opportunity or a barrier that you faced? 
So one of the students talked about he developed, he was a mobile app developer. He worked for this startup and he, he not a startup, he worked for a professor, under Yale professor and built a vision app for specifically to be able to, to know uh, much soon, sooner if a person can't read. Okay. So it's pretty cool. He built the app. Uh, internships leading uh, summer internships. The next one was summer internships, the learnings, deadlines. So, you know, this one talked about he did an internship. He learned how to work with adults and how he was nervous in the beginning, how he was making mistakes, how he overcame them, what he did in the evenings, did join Toastmasters and stuff, whatever he did to start learning how to deal with adults. And at the end of it was things worked out well. Okay. Uh, the third one is a CS and biology internship. Um, again, this one's taking of a significant educational opportunity, help peers also help peers, did this program and finally was chosen as a group presenter. So that shows educational priorities, right? Um, this dude was a multicultural, grew up in Japan and different parts of the world Then you know, found his uh, opportunity when he came back to Japan to work in with the church and do an outreach mission opportunity and learn, learn compassion, learn different languages and stuff. And now he wants to go into international relationships. So you can take a uh, non-education thing also make it into one of these cool things. Uh, this one is medical. This is actually your Shreya, my daughter's one, um, where uh, she wrote, actually there are two of them are from her. Uh, medical scientist relationship, med, scientific research internship, personal connection. She talked about uh, depth of the learning where she talked about the fact that she had, we had a, my stepdad was down with a particular type of a cancer and how she wanted to, uh, when she joined this internship, she wanted to learn how she can find cures to that. And that was a big one, right? There's a significant opportunity. And then she took it and she took it to the next level altogether. Okay. Um, this one is about love for history and educational opportunity, uh, National History Day journey, women power, writing about women in power. She made, took a trip to Poland uh, to see Auschwitz and World War II and talked about her vision of changing the world. So again, take one opportunity and overcome. So you can see clearly uh, overcoming an educational barrier, nobody really wrote about over here, but there is a way you can, if you have a hardship or if you have a... Um, like you would, you were not being offered a particular class in a school, you still went out and did it out of passion. If there was something you learned completely outside, all that is uh, educational barriers. You can write about that, okay? Uh, PIQ5 is a significant challenge you've faced, overcome this, um, you know, um, again, this is about significant challenge you have faced and the steps you have taken to overcome this challenge. How has this challenge uh, affected your academic achievement? So. Uh, this dude, this dude talked about a stick shift and uh, you know what he learned about driving because of that he didn't want to drive a uh, um, automatic and how he learned about the mechanics of uh, of a car and uh, you know he talks about how he handled it again it's not the most significant challenge but uh, he talks about his academic achievement and you know his lack of focus on himself and his uh, you know he was not very confident and. Uh, Pretty cool, interesting stuff. I'm not always uh, the best stuff, but uh, one thing you'll notice about me is I, am, I, I go in yin yang myself, and I'll look for even better examples. This one talked about uh, a significant challenge she overcame was she had to break up with her mom, and uh, mom was becoming too reliant on her. They had a separation in the family, and uh, how she, uh, you know, wanted to, you know, get out of her mom's skin and wanted to become on her own somebody and uh, how she did it over time and she became an entrepreneur went into improv and then ultimately she did patch up with the mom so it's a good a story to explain there um this one was uh, you know um, again another fair, uh, significant challenge faced was uh, parental separation the stigma they went through the low self esteem the bullies who started bullying her a lot kind of cyber bullying she went through but then she stood up to all those things and basically talked about it and how the academic uh, i don't think she talked about her achievement but there were other places where people missed the opportunity um mom recovering from cancer this is a student that he you know was mourning from the whole uh, you know mom really going down and how his tennis coach came along how he taught him how to be more mentally tough and how he was able to translate some of the knowledge to his mother and you know shows how how he's learned from one side this is literally like the uh, the the hero's journey of life okay so you could apply hero's journey over here that could be a good way of doing it um think about an academic subject that inspires you Describe how you have furthered this inside and outside the class. 
Um, so let's say he talked about bio and so he talks about bio that he loved bio and then how this person went on to be wants to become a pediatric uh, uh, doctor um, and surgeon and uh, why particular pediatrics and especially he talks about his own experiences and summer shadowing experience the vision that he has for the med profession for pediatrics so goes into a good explanation of that um, this person had uh, eating disorder problems how she stoned created a club and uh, you know inside and research found ways to find confidence in herself in her peers so really talks about the how she used bio and her knowledge of her body to apply to herself uh, last one was uh, using environmental research like you know ap environmental sciences kind of things but really was passionate about the environment global advocacy policies laws how she wants to change it and of course she's on her way to becoming a lawyer right now um, my love for math was another one. So because the love for math, how did he build on that? Again, so the question is a uh, subject, how you furthered this academic subject that inspires you. He talks about love for math, what he loves about it, how he joined the Go team, how he got in game theory research and the career vision. So pretty solid way of explaining career. Remember I told you career is very important to write about over here. Most students mess up. They don't write much about the demonstrator interest in the career from there. Okay. Uh, what have we done to make your community or uh, school a better place? Uh, poop, composting. So this one was talking about how she learned how to do composting stuff from her own backyard and stuff and how she made a community a better place by creating this eco action club in her school and stuff like that. Okay. Um, this person was riding her bicycle to school, got into massive car accidents and then over time, she created a bicycling buddies club so people could go together and bicycle and, uh, you know, found ways to solve, you know, PD, you know, people getting kicked off the streets. Okay. Um, this person talked about poverty, how she was touched by um, a three day. Uh, she did a fast, a three day fast during her Taekwondo class. And uh, she realized how bad it is to be sleeping hungry and know the plight of homeless people. And then she connected that with uh, how she did a whole research awareness. She was part of Interact Club. She did give these talks and did fundraisers for homelessness and went into the details of what homelessness problems are in San Francisco. A pretty interesting style. Uh, next one is uh, this dude was tackling obesity, was himself uh, pretty uh, big and uh, created a safe place club, created a nonprofit, became a role model for people. He lost a lot of weight. So, you know, so it talks about that. So, made the community a better place. Hopefully, these are explaining things better than even going into what the UC is asking about. You can see that in the app down there, okay? But beyond what has been shared, how do you make, you, you, what makes you stand out as a strong candidate? So in both of these, clearly you first have to make sure that you, your seven of those prompts do not connect to any of these things, okay? So like in this case, he talks about, I'm an introvert, a creative introvert, and uh, my strength is in understanding how people work together with the random skill sets and how I can make it work together, how he was able to do a fashion uh, club and why he be became a soccer goalie, right? Explains that concept by why certain things are very important to him. And the next one is about biracial uh, heritage, how he got screwed from both sides, you know, and Mexican American relay uh, culture one side and Armenian heritage, how he was not accepted by either ways and how over time he comes to, to comes to take, find the best of the worlds and find peace with himself, okay? And the last one really is for transfer students. It's really how, you know, you're gonna talk about readiness for your upper division courses, how you enroll into the university, but that's really only for upper division um, uh, transfer students. So, so that's it guys, uh, you know, don't, uh, uh, you know, make sure you've seen this video end to end, you've reviewed this stuff and given me the first draft of your Berkeley essay, okay? That's very critical. I need that when I meet next time with you guys. Thank you, parents. I hope you are watching this end-to-end -end as well.